present. Okay, now we have talked about the basic process of this uh, northern blotting, but we need to know another thing that how to design the probes, how to make the probes. Now the probes we can utilize, we can make are of two different type. One is the double stranded probe. It can be also single standard probe. Now for the double standard probe synthesis, we can do it in two different ways. One is the Nick translation process. Another one is the random priming utilizing PCR technique. Now this first one is the Nick translation. And in this process, what we can do, we are having the DNA. Now we treat the DNA with DNAs1, which is the endonuclease, which will cleave the DNA in different segments. As you can see in this picture, it cleaves uh, the DNA in these different segments. And after that, what we do, we incubate uh, this uh, segmentized DNA with E. coli DNA polymerase 1, which is having the capability of extending uh, the 3' end. Because if it gets the 3' hydroxyl, it can extend that 3' hydroxyl further when it gets the NTPs. So we need to provide the DNTPs and all these things. So if you provide the DNTPs, it can elongate it. But remember, we need to not only produce these probes, but also we need to make sure that the probes are attached to any kind of uh, radio labeled uh, thing, any kind of radioactive isotope, or also uh, it can be labeled uh, with say, any kind of chemiluminescent molecule. Now in this procedure, as we are extending these gaps with DNA polymerase 1, what we are doing, we are also providing some leveled uh, DNTP. So one type of DNTPs are radio labeled, which is provided, and also th uh, the rest of the three type of DNTPs are unlabeled. So we provide these four types of DNTPs, uh, A, A, G, T, and C. Among uh, all these four type of DNTP, one of them, one type of them, say suppose A's are all, uh, we take the adenosines and we all mark all those adenosine radio level. Okay, and you provide them. So one type of the DNTPs are getting radio labeled, and then when they transfer, when they start, uh, uh, in when they start extending uh, the regions or the fragmentalized regions, uh, they start putting the radio labeled isotope there. And sooner what we get this this thing. After that, what we treat, we again treat it with DNAs, and treating with DNAs again, we get as a cleaved segment of that. In the cleaved segment of this DNA, we get is with the radio label probe. So we can take this as a probe and we can attach this single stranded DNA with uh, our uh, desired DNA which is in the gel. And after the transfer of the DNA from the gel to the membrane, we can give this probe which can attach to this uh, our desired gene due to the complementarity nature. Now the second type of technique that can be utilized to produce a double stranded uh, DNA is a random primed labeling. In the random prime le leveling, in this case, uh, what we can do, we utilize PCR. Now we get we get the random primer, uh, design the random primer against the DNA, and the primer will be added. And with that, we also provide some of the uh, some of the modified uh, DNTP. Now in this case, the modified DNTP is DUTP, and it is modified via via attachment of a chemical uh, chemiluminescent molecules. It is called the digoxygenin or DIG. Now this digoxygenin UDP is a very important factor which you can bind whenever the U is required during the synthesis of uh, the DNA, the dig DUTP will be added. Now due to that what we get, we get a marked region with dig DUTP. Now we can detect the dig DUTP after uh, this process utilizing chemiluminescent technique. So uh, this ensures us if we gather the stretch of the DNA added with or marked with this dig DUTP uh, and we take this uh, single standard DNA out of it and we can provide it during the probing process. After the probing we can detect the position of our gene utilizing the chemiluminescent technique. Okay, so what we get, we get this PCR uh, DNA and we get, uh, attach the primer and then we provide a lot of dig DUTP and also the clean off fragment. Clean off fragment means simply the uh, fragment, the large fragment of E. coli polymerase 1 which is lacking the 5' to 3' exonuclease activity and having both uh, the 3' to 5' exonuclease as well as 5' to 3' synthesis activity. And we utilize that clean off fragment and we provide the clean off fragment to extend uh, this primer. It will extend the primer by adding the DUTPs where they require the DUTP. And then we get this uh, band and we can denature this part and we take this primer and we can utilize this as a probe. Okay, so we can utilize it as a probe in the future reactions. So these are the uh, two techniques of getting the double standard probes. 
by getting the DNA probes, we can also produce some RNA probes. Now, how to make the RNA probes? We can produce this RNA probes via this kind of in vitro transcription experiments. In this in vitro transcription, what we can do? We get uh, we can utilize M13 vectors. Uh, so in this case, we get this vector, and onto the vector, we have a restriction fragment of a DNA, which is a segment we require to copy because this is the segment we want to be our probe. So we first uh, make a cut of this restriction fragment of our desired probe and we amplify this probe utilizing this N13 vector. Then we get this and attach it to the uh, to this polylinker region by releasing or substituting this polylinker segment. So we substitute this polylinker segment and we attach this restriction fragment of uh, or our desired probe onto the position. After the attachment, what we do, we again utilize uh, some uh, restriction enzymes. Say this is, after using restriction enzyme, it can cut from here. After cutting it from here, we get a linearized a plasmid. Now this linearized plasmid we transcribe the sp6 RNA polymerase because we can get two different types of promoter T7 promoter as well as sp6 promoter both uh, flanking by this polylinker region. So when we substitute the polylinker with our restriction fragment what we get in this uh, vector is our uh, desired fragments flanked by both sp6 and t7 promoter and if we cut it from the t7 promoter what we'll get we get the sp6 promoter intact so we can utilize sp6 rna polymerase to synthesize from there now if we cut it from the sp6 promoter then we get this t7 promoter so in those cases we'll utilize t7 polymerase for the a transcription procedure. Now in this case we cut it from the T7 promoter so we get the intact sp6 promoter so we can utilize the sp6 RNA polymerase and using sp6 RNA polymerase we can produce a transcripts of that. We produce a lot of mRNAs and we take the mRNAs we treat it with DNAs to chew rest of the DNA segments which is this region and also this part. So DNA portions will be chewed out only the RNA segments will be there we get this pure transcription products. Now our desired uh, product is this one uh, which is our restriction fragment but we get only few number of restriction fragments in our hand. So we need to amplify that. For the amplification we utilize this M13 vector in this case. So we can utilize lot of M13 vectors uh, like that and also we can utilize different types of bacteriophage DNA dependent RNA polymerase uh, to produce a lot of different RNA probes. Okay.